I love Tommy. I keep my promise in here. I keep my promise in here. I'm trying to help you while you're here. Trying, trying to help. If you'd like to say anything. The room is yours. The room is, the room is yours. Hello everyone, welcome to Turn to Gold. I am Krista Cesare. Happy July. It's a hot one here in the Northeast, almost 100 degrees. It's a scorcher, as they used to say in my cross-country days. Well, hello, Carol. Thank you for being with us. I really appreciate that. Uh, as you know, every week I try to, on Turn to Gold, uh, spotlight folks who are doing good, doing well, who are trying to turn the water to the wine, the lead to the gold, the concept of alchemy, spiritual alchemy, physical alchemy, and trying to be a, a spotlight, a beacon of hope in a world that sometimes uh, struggles with that concept. Hello, Vince. Welcome from California. Hi, Barry. It's nice to see you here. I really appreciate you guys being here on a regular basis and supporting this little effort of mine. Uh, last week, we had on the former five-time national karate champion in the women's category, uh, Melissa Payone Soma, who now has the, a beautiful shop in Sugarloaf, New York. And, and with that shop, she helps to influence and, and inspire people and to give them techniques for meditation, for positive affirmations, and uh, hopefully a positive outlook on life. Uh, the concept of, of unity, of, of working together, is one that is often tossed about in conversations. Uh, people discuss those things in terms of trying to get together politically, uh, talking about working together to solve issues of crime or gun control or climate change or the economy and all the things we work through in our, in our daily lives. The paranormal sometimes, because it is an exact science, is open to many viewpoints and many philosophies uh, and many opposing ideas. Uh, what some person calls a ghost, other call it a spirit, some call it a shade, some say what's a recording, and people can argue for three days straight about what that is and what that means and you know how those things come to pass. But one thing I've learned over the years, and I've lived for, geez, quite a long time, it's a little scary actually, is that we have our own lens, and our lens sometimes stops us from seeing the person's point of view. It's very important to kind of lift our lens sometimes and see things with a clarity, with an honest approach. Easy to say, tough to do, especially putting things in action. And uh, my guest tonight, I'm very honored to have them here. Um, it began with a dream. And the dream was to try to create an actual unifying event, uh, trying to spotlight folks who, who do the good work, who try to cooperate in the field. And it was called the New Jersey Prayer Unity Expo. And the first one was in, a, in an old art gallery. Um, it was like a dollar in a dream. Uh, there was a very small budget, people working very hard to get things up and running. Uh, the event uh, promoter at the time, uh, a very fine gentleman, had said to me, listen, Chris, I really can't offer anything. You're a nice guy. Come show up and I'll give you a table. And I said, he seems so nice. He seems such a, like an honest, a straight shooter, honest broker. I said, sure, that's great. And it must be Italian in me, you know. And I have watched he and the co-organizer grow this event from a few hundred people to thousands. And it hasn't been easy. I've watched over the years as things have changed and moved about, get to work through COVID. Uh, sometimes celebrities have special demands or egos that must be met or assuaged. Everyone wants to be a part of it and you can't make everyone happy. And yet through it all, the message is the same. Working together and being kind, showing fellowship. And uh, I am very, very honored uh, to be going back uh, this Saturday. And that's exactly right. The best industry paranormal is that right. And that is, that is the organization they're from, the industry paranormal. Um, my guests tonight, I'll uh, bring them in in a few seconds, are John Ruggiero and Chris Therian. I had the opportunity to be on their show, and it's, yeah, note to self, better than mine. Keep working at this. 
And they're just really wonderful people. You know, I, I love them so much. They don't have to bring me back uh, each year. I, I spoke there three times in the past. Uh, my star has faded over the years. There's no more sci-fi right now. There's no more travel channel. But every year they reach out and say, hey, you know, you're part of the family. You want to come back and, and be there. And I always jump at it. I, I think it's a wonderful thing. And I really appreciate the concept of actually works. In other words, people practice things and they say things, but actually apply it. And I'm very honored to have them both on. So I'm going to bring them both on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, hopefully over 18. There might be some bad words. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can introduce you, John Ruggiero and Chris Therian. <laughs> bad words right here. Not, not so much me. <laughs> Thank you for, for having us, Chris. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. I, I am I am honored. I know it's a super busy time for you. The event is just about three days away. The VAP party is about two days away. And how are things going? Woo! That's a loaded question. <laughs> we were actually working right up to the point of coming on and setting up uh, for the for this. Since we discussion. opened our eyes at seven o'clock this morning, yeah, it's been it's... nonstop. And my father from Georgia showed up in the midst of it all too. So wow! Yes. A surprise visit. Um. He's coming to help. He's 75 and he works harder and he puts me to shame. We work everybody, Chris. They're, if you're here, you're working. <laughs> well, it's, it's a team effort, right? Well, and, right? And as a result, I mean, you, you obviously you have to have rules. You have to have guidelines. You have to have standards, right? Or things just go haywire. Sure stability. Um, you have to have stability. Yeah. Um, you have to have support and resources and we're very fortunate in that respect and that we have a lot of good people that have helped us like you said from the beginning to grow this thing and the township is wonderful the mayor john mccormick is wonderful right. the people in the township that support us are great and everybody comes with such a great attitude year after year it's kind of we're very fortunate into, yeah very this, fortunate it's such a good karma that I think we feel in that building. You were there last year with, with yes. COVID. I've never felt anything like that. And and, no. and it just, for me, makes me want to give them even more for their money every time. Yeah, it was it was healing, cathartic. People were locked away in their homes or apartments for a year, year and a half. Uh, they couldn't work properly. They're scared of passing away. Relatives were passing. They couldn't yeah. go to funerals. Yeah. It was I lost my daughter in the midst of all of this. Oh. And, and yet we still, again... I think when those doors opened and we finally did it, it was um, it was almost like, okay, something bad happened, but the normal can come back and look at all these people here. Yeah. Look at, cause I'm not the only one I'm, 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 you know, many people. And, and if you watch what we do, I've been very public about it because I think we need to share everything that we go through together because I think that's what heals each right. other. Yes, you're never truly alone, right? I mean, you no. feel alone sometimes. I'm sure we all do it once in a while, like no one understands or I'm alone in this. It could be health problems, relationship problems, whatever, job problems. But you're you're really not. And if, I think if you get over some of the ego or some of the pride, right, right. you kind of let the, the guard down. You're like, you know what? This person is actually thinking of me. And it, it feels good to know they, they care. And, but it's funny, though, because you can go get a haircut, right? And you get the haircut, you pay for it. You, you like it. And eight people say, yeah, good. good. If one person goes, oh, what happened to your hair? Like, oh, what, what do you mean? That one person can almost like counteract, right? The yes. eight people said nice things. Yeah. I think that part of being human means we worry. You know, we want to make things right and fix people and make them happy. And it's, I, I just, I, you're not to spend any detail on this or any names or places, but it's got to be rough trying to run an event that thousands want to be a part of, but just cannot because the spacing, the size, right? How, how is that? How, how do you? deal with the, the difficulty of trying to tell people, listen, I'm sorry, I just, I can't have it up 9,000 tables. Well, and that's part of the issue is that, um, you know, you could say yes, issue, you could say yes to people five years in a row. And then if you can't year number six, we're, we're very limited in the number of vendors that we actually do have because we have a lot of special guests like yeah. yourself. Um, and again, uh, I'll go back to where you started. Um, we had nothing in the beginning. It really was just, I I had the idea to do this. I ran into that building. They, that, that building was haunted, so they wanted us to do a right. ghost hunt. And I walked through and I went, man, this would be a great place to try this convention thing. And I reached out to Chris and Chris, again, 
the story that everybody knows his story. And I said, please, would you consider doing it? And without a hesitation, he said, I'll be there. But even bigger, you had a flat tire. Oh, that thing And you square. still <laughs> showed up, yeah, you're Chris. Right. You're you right. are yes. a man of commitment. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, what? I, it was literally, that, that was flat. So I don't know. That was a tough, tough thing, I know. And um, yeah, so uh, those, those things sometimes happen to us. And uh, we'll see if we can get them back in just one moment. They've had some technical issues. And we'll, we're going to continue to talk more about this. Um, one of the things that, that I like, as they're saying, is that they really try to do their best, even in tough conditions, uh, to make that that work. And it, it's over the years has become probably the premier event uh, in the Northeast, uh, the premier event uh, for the paranormal. And they bring in celebrities left and right. And in a, in a few minutes, I'll I'll ask them to speak to uh, who will be there and uh, who to expect to see, because I think that's fun, too, for people to see. And uh, I'll put the poster up real quick. If I can do that, I'm going to see if I can uh, put the poster up of the people there because there are quite a few of them. And here we are now. And there you can see. All right. And you can see some of the folks will be there. All righty. So in a few moments, I'll have them come back on and we'll have them go over step by step who these folks are. Most of them I know. Unfortunately, most of them, some I do not because I'm like an old timer. You know, so some of the folks have gotten popular in the last few years. And I don't know sometimes if they're famous from the radio or TikTok or Twitch or Twitter or any of those things, but John and Chris will straighten us out on that thing. And one thing too is, I don't know if you noticed, but I think for a long time, Chris was the silent partner. I had no idea how much she did until I realized, wait, who made that sign? Whoa, pretty impressive. And, so, and they're, they're both incredible people, but I like to talk some, as you can tell here on the show, obviously. And I know John also likes to communicate. Chris is sometimes in the background and it's such a selfless thing. I, I just, uh, I, I really admire a person who could be in the background and be happy for somebody else that they care about and not have to get the credit all the time. That's called character. That's called character, you know. And um, there are a lot of good people. Um, but, you know, I think a great person is someone who can find value in what you do and what you know, the person next to them does. And when I was back in Geneseo, I remember Jeff Unger saying, you know, I admire that person for this and this. I'm like, wow, he's not competing with them. He really admires them for being a good artist or a singer. He admires them, right, for being a good athlete. And, and, and I love that, you know. And, and so I think that's a rare quality that Chris does have. She won't talk about it, so I'll mention it while she's back in the green room. He says, no choice but to hear it now. And I'll bring it back on now. My apologies to Chris in advance as I bring both John and Chris back on. Well, hello there. We don't know what happened. It's paranormal. <laughs> All of a sudden, we were looking, and it says our mic was unplugged, and we had to come all the way back through again. Yeah. Weird. Well, the good thing is I said thinking about either one of you, so you're safe. I spoke about the weather. I spoke about the <laughs> we heard you. We heard your praising, Chris. I didn't hear anything oh, yeah, nice yeah. about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a nice thing. Even even the television show that I was on with you, uh, you know, we were talking. Uh, was it Tanya and I and you yeah. were at the panel, John, right? Yeah. And then Chris is down, crouched in a corner by a pole, helping out with information. Boy, what a, what a kind thing, right? I believe in everything this guy does. He he's uh, listen. He's the genius behind what we do, 100%. Um, he trusts yeah. me, and and it, and let me tell you something. It's a compliment to work with somebody like John and have him trust you to be able to take care of what you need to in the background. So I mean, again, kudos for John as well because she, I couldn't yeah. do what I do. If she it wasn't is the for most, him. like you said, unselfish, kind organized person you will ever meet in your life. And I'm, I couldn't do this. I could have never done this without her. I mean, she's just everything I lack, she has. And, and believe me, there's herself. a lot of that. And she's <laughs> right there to. He is me. That's what I tell people when people say, well, what's your part? What he does, he is me. There, There is no distinction. Does that Note make sense? Self. Note to self, things got weird just now. Oh, no, sorry. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are him and he is you, and then right. if you have different ideas, but they're competing ideas, then we're going to. Oh, so I wanted to read something. You don't mind. Read something. And I don't know if you know what the recognizer or not. It says here, it said, <clears throat> two weeks later, Mike Tensher walked into Martin's office like he had so many times before with a yellow folder in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Martin was on a conference call and he nodded to Mike and motioned him to have a seat. Any clue where that comes from? There's a book that I read. 
I was waiting for him to say something, and I was, he that didn't was, say that it. That was 12 years ago. I, I, yes. I love this book. I'm very, Isn't it awesome? He was going to write a second book, started and stopped, yeah. Chris, and I'm so disappointed. The editing was horrible, but I think the characters and the overall story was it's, one that It's proud interesting, of. and if you ever want to have it re-edited, I can help with that, not not to worry, because I, I, would I think appreciate the story that. is fascinating. I loved it. The character development Aren't is rich. The, I'm an avid, avid reader, and I, I, I actually went and edited his book, but because I'm not an English major, he went to professional editors, yes. and you can see what they did. Well, that that can be adjusted. Just a matter of time. I would appreciate it if you could. I'm but a, his, I'm like version. I said, I read, I read. Oh my God, probably no less than fifteen books a week, and I'm not kidding. Wow. I read a lot, and I told him your book is phenomenal. It's engaging. It makes you feel emotions. It makes you connect to every character. It, at the end, it just totally rips your heart and gives you something. And I go, how could you not understand that that book? And he goes. Oh, yeah. you're prejudiced because you won't tell me. No, that Thomas time. character is so compelling. Right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you Very for telling compelling. him that, Chris. Try, trying to, to navigate between the self and others, expectation and hope. I mean, I, I was tense reading like, okay, I, he means well, but what's happening here? And they mean well, but it's not going properly. And this person that can't just, it was, I don't want to use the word so proper, it's overdone, but it was like a Shakespearean drama. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. modern day you know so i I'm, I'm a big fan of it i, I really am and i i hope you re-release it i hope you work on number two yeah about the author let's see here about the author uh, let's see he doesn't like when he oh that's no, the wrong person sorry all right so <laughs> i know you're probably right keep going <laughs> yeah, here, let's go. so, here, here, here's a rather large comment it's from Barry Marks. I think you know Barry. It looks like Phil Sims. Yes, we do. I actually call him that. I don't even know his real name. I said, "Hey, Phil Sims." Barry Marks. He's going to be his fourth visit this weekend. He says, Barry's "Always awesome. a fun time." I always meet someone new in the paranormal field. All celebrities will take the time to talk with you if you meet up with them. So. Yeah, and 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 again, you're part of that overall picture of. It's been our belief since the beginning. If you bring enough good people in to your event, that it just creates good energy, and that kind of spreads, you know, throughout yeah. during the day. At least it has for all these years, and that's why yes. you and I spoke. And there was a year where you didn't come, and there were circumstances not none of yours, but around. I, that. I had the keeping crud, didn't I? The keeping crud all over me. I this is a joke. Remember. Note to self: that joke did not work. No <laughs> big joke. Cut those but, out entirely. All right. But I really, I really did when it came around again. I felt really bad, and I just said to myself, "This is again a guy who did for us, and he's part of Power Unity. He's the, one of the you are a deep that built discussion it. between John and I. Yeah, we gotta have him back. Like this oh. is not Power Unity without no, Chris. And when I oh. saw you last year, yeah, last year was such a again such a different convention and yes. having you there it was like full circle when we finished and we were beat up with covid and cancellations yes. and, and refunds do you we ever heard through. of a convention that gives refunds that's Lots very rare that's the most unheard of but we finished and after the last party the saturday night party we went to the hotel and we were right. beaten up sweaty tired and people were down there just gathered and they clapped as we walked in the door and it almost brings tears to my eyes right. now because right. What a experience. I did cry. That's why we went upstairs oh, to the room was, because I was crying. I've never felt again. It was just like, oh my God, all that work and they get it. You know, they get yeah. it. We give everything we have. We do. Yeah. That wouldn't have happened without hard work. You couldn't have done that last year without hard work. And people see what stopped. Everything stopped. Everything. Right. For a while, but not you. You didn't stop. And so no. that's telling again, you know, someone's words can be very inspiring. I like good words, but someone's actions are the true tell. It's the there true you know. sense of what happens there. And listen, because some people oh, you're right about that, because yeah. some people know how to speak very eloquently yes. and beautifully, but they don't back it up with the actions. No. Well, and that's that's where the pain comes in. That's when yeah. when somebody who you think has your back, colloquially speaking, somebody is there for you when they suddenly they take they say something that's very hurtful or begin to condemn you and thinking, well, well, wait a second. Um, and listen, that can happen in a family, in a relationship, at yeah. work it can happen, it can happen in your neighborhood. It's just extra painful when someone that you rely on, someone that you, you know, you're helping them out and it kind of zips around. And that that's life lessons, correct? 
but you don't yes. stop caring about people anyway, no. do you? Keep on staying no. positive. You still, you still yes. stay the course. Stay the yes. course. Stay true to who you are and what you, you do. You have some real big names that are going to be there this Saturday. I'm hoping to focus on some. Is that okay? A lot of them are on Twitch. I heard you mention that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that sometimes. You got to start stuff. watching paranormal TV, Jen. Hey, Twitch is a dancer. There. Come on now. Twitch is <laughs> yeah. a very famous dancer. We can go with that. We can work famous with that. dancer? Yes, Twitch. You've never heard of him? And Rock is going to roll with all his might on Bedrock. Twitch, there Twitch. No, that's not the one. That's the Flintstones. <laughs> okay, so the, I think probably the most important guest we'll get to right away. Uh, he's loved and respected across the paranormal field. Oh, uh, there he is. Yay! They, they, they don't get just no kidding. bigger than that. Just, just kidding. I thought that might be funny. Yes, he has the biggest heart. You no, got that right. That's what I thought it'd be. Can that one? All right. So I went. So let's put the actual poster up and see the celebrities will be there. Okay. So ghost hunters, well known, right? Popular people, popular folks. Let me see if I take that banner down real quick because I don't want to compete with that. There we go. Okay. So can we start top left? So Ghost Hunters, who will be there from Ghost Hunters this year? The entire uh, cast, uh, Dave Tango, Jason Hawes, Steve Gonzalez, Sherry D. Benedetti. Wow. Uh, the whole entire cast will be there. Like They were there last year as well. And people will love that. They've been around for quite some awesome time. Awesome people. Good people too. Respected, right? Oh, big time. They're, they're top of the food chain. They've been around forever. Yeah. They started the whole thing, really. Yeah. Years ago. That's a good, and, and I like the fact that they, they come back. Well, that again, hopefully says something about us and yeah. how we do it and what we do that, you know, they are willing to return year after year. Absolutely. And and people love to see them. Oh, yeah. they And they're good to their fans. Everyone on that poster is really yes. good to their fans. Destination Fear. Ooh. Do you know them? Um, I can't see the picture. I'm too old. <laughs> Who's... They're they're like the younger again compared to us. They're the younger group that have, they're on Travel Channel now. Very popular. Okay. And, and who are they? Do you remember their names? Uh, yeah. That's Dakota. Uh, who's on? Alex, Tanner, and Chelsea. The, the, got it. In order that I see from okay, right, got my it. left to right. So young and very cool. Yeah, very big following too. Very big following. Huge following. Huge. Did you meet the Ghost Brothers last year? You were there, or you didn't have no, a chance? I did, you know me. I stand at my table and smile a lot, and then people come by and say hello. And then I, you know, I, I don't really venture forth much. I, I didn't meet them either. They seem very nice, though. I Ghost saw them Brothers, are good guys, funny guys too. And again, what again? What I love about all of these people, they appreciate the people yeah. that follow them and made them who they are. They're really good to their their fans. They, they are. really are. Yes. One tough bit of news: Amy Allen, right? Yeah, she actually texted me three, four days ago now. Uh, the text read, um, I think I have COVID. And I texted her back, are you sick? Did you get tested? And she said, yes and yes. <laughs> and I said, look, Amy, you're going to have to make that announcement on social media because right. coming from us, people Just aren't going to gonna believe same. it. No. I said, right. so please. So she did. And I screen captured it and I put it out there. But yeah, she's got COVID. Well, and that happens. That's part of, of running an event, right? You, but you yes. have so many, so many names and faces that – if her only her be a disaster, be, oh, this we can't have this happen. She'll be missed strongly. But the fact oh. you have so many people there, the show goes oh, on. And every last year we, we lost three or four, and we yes. still had our biggest convention yeah. ever. Now Chip Coffee, I, I know him very well. He's almost like my age, right? He's, we're one of the old timers there. A fellow former New Yorker, right, and uh, a, a great medium. Uh, he, he he does the uh, the gallery readings, correct? Yeah, have you you've have you gotten a chance to sit and really know Chip? Do you, do you talk to him? No, I just sit at my table and smile at people and shake hands. No, but I mean order. past conventions and I mean <laughs> one Chip time. Is, Chip's one a time, great guy, great yeah. guy, great guy. Uh, I, I I we're fortunate enough to be actually friends with him, and he right. just did our show not too long ago. Just giving yeah. honest guy. And know? and he when we're ready, he is actually going to officiate our wedding. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. So tweet that or something. It is true. He, it <laughs> it's is true. true. But yes, Fire he will be back. doing a gallery reading to close the convention. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. I met him years and years ago at this Bethlehem Casino, I think, or San, some casino in Bethlehem back 11 years ago. I was wearing a suit. He liked that. And then I met him about three, four years ago for COVID at an event in Syracuse where it's a smaller event. We had to talk a little bit. Very nice. He was talking about his past good and things. Guy. So, really and then, good guy. and then, you know, John Zaffis, I have to say, oh, you know, the legend. Yes, he, he is uh, amazing. Uh, the first book written about my experience was about, written by Reverend Tim Shaw. 
and John did the the forward for that. I was very honored for that. And there was an event when I first started talking by my house about 11 years ago, five miles away. I wasn't invited. They didn't know what, you know. So John got the people on the phone. Listen, bring this guy. You know, what do you hear? So he has always advocated. He's so kind. He never asked for anything in return. I, I I love this man. And John Zaffis, of course, one the collector, right? Yeah. The Godfather of the Paranormal. And and of course, you're very close to him as well. You've known him for many years. John, um, for me, uh, you know, all the people on the poster, I admire and respect. Yes. But John is top of the food chain in the paranormal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, he's the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. A lot of yes. people don't know that. But he's been in this field since he was a teenager. I yeah. mean, he's done it all and seen it all. And I respect John more than anyone. And yeah, he's a friend. Great man, right? Great person. Oh, and, and Dave Schrader. Now, he now has a top flight, a top notch show, correct? Nationwide. The Holzer Files was on for two seasons and okay. they didn't pick it up for a third, but he's going to be doing another show, I think, in the fall. Got it. So uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but Dave's a good guy, too. Great yeah. lecturer. Everybody oh loved God. his lecture last Brilliant year. Brilliant lecturer. He's a lot of radio shows he does, right? And podcasts. Oh, yeah, yes. been around forever. He's a, he's a good investigator, right? He, he's good yes. at sharing information. Very respected also. Oh, yes. definitely. Now, Chris Smith and Mike Gonzalez, is, is that this related to Steve Gonzalez or no? No, no. They're the Tennessee Ray Chaser guys. Remember okay. those guys? Uh, they would try to catch a ghost. They did Haunted on the show. Towns. They did Haunted Towns. They've done it. That sounds familiar. Three. You would know them if you've, you've seen them. Yes. But again, good guys too. They Chris has been to our convention two or three times. Mike's a Jersey guy. This will be his first time right. coming. But again, they got a lot of fans and people like them a lot. Mike Moran and you have Mark Sherman, right? You know those guys, right? Like you're not Mark, from Jersey. Yeah, they're like, the Weird New Jersey guys. Yeah, cool. If you're from Jersey, they're yeah, icons. They're, you know you the know. magazine Weird New Jersey. Yeah, they're, and now they're on Paranormal Hood on camera, so a lot of people know them. That's cool. And and then I kind of call them the, the, the biggest new thing. I mean, they, they've really in the past year or two kind of skyrocketed into a, a new stratosphere. People want them to show up. They have their touring museum. Uh, they communicate with spirit. That's Cody and Satori, the paranormal couple, right? They're just yes, good people this, as the, well. They're fresh when, new, you know. When you meet them, you're going to like them instantly. They're just yeah. really nice, genuine going people. Genuine. Yeah, and they appreciate what they're doing and the support that they have. They've done two events with us, with right. New Jersey Paranormal, and they had a great time. And they were with us ghost hunting, and they're just good people. They're kind, right? They're very down. Oh, they've very got friendly. very and Their display very is hard. awesome. Their haunted objects. I and love the that. Yes. that. They have really come out and see that. You're going to love that. I, I love that. I think this is good. And uh, here's uh, Jeff saying hello for the goat from Ohio. <laughs> so, <laughs> he says, hello, hello what I'm doing <laughs> I love it love it and Jeff was uh once was the groundskeeper at the Beller house a while ago so oh, cool he probably has some pretty interesting stories to share right as as time we go and, and Deb you're right you know Dave is a very oh, personable Deb. I remember a few years back he found the love of his life remember that you know, he was very happy there and so I, I like when people have some good things to say and uh thank you Jeff for your kind words we'll take them right We'll take them. Yeah, the one one thing about Dave again as a person, yeah, he does that prayer announcement on his page. I don't yes. know if you follow him, but he's always if someone contacts him and asks him to say a prayer or put a prayer out there to his followers, he'll say, Please say a prayer for this one. They're dealing with that. And even something little like that, just there makes should be more difference. people in the world doing that. It just it makes a difference, you know. Well, I Let's talk about that because uh, there are two schools of thought that I've, I've run across. One school of thought says it is a kind gesture to pray for someone, to keep them on your thoughts, to try to send positive energy their way for healing, for guidance, for uplifting. Others say, I'm so sick and tired of thoughts and prayers. No one's doing anything. And as people in the public eye, uh, how, how do you balance that? Because people say, well, no more thoughts and prayers. Let's, let's take action in some of these things. It's, or do you feel there is, actually is a, a reason and, and a, a purpose for prayer? I do. I do believe you are correct that some of us take it too mildly and we just post and just say it just to say it because it's like right. saying good morning Figure and speech. someone, how or are happy you? Anniversary yeah. And happy it's just day. a reaction. Yeah. But when, if you stop saying it and you stop doing it, then we stop being human to each other. So there are genuine stuff behind it when people do say it. And sometimes you are connecting with someone else who's going through something and they're seeing that message and they're saying it matters. 
and others you, you just you can't go too far down that rabbit hole and say, well, this one isn't genuine. This really means nothing because maybe to okay. the person who needs to hear it, it's genuine enough to get them through one yeah, day that, to yeah. the next. Yeah, Cause I'm thinking even the three seconds that it takes someone to type that message is, is three seconds that they that's were a positive energy you and right. write what yeah. they said. That's, uh, yeah. That's what I, I agree with you. I just don't know if you feel the same way because yeah. it, it, we're, I guess we're a little old school though, aren't we? We're a little bit old school. Right. Action. We, 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 uh, you know, we, we tend to remember a time where people got along a little better than they do now. And I think that sometimes we, we can be a little sad by things that happen as we see the oh, world yeah. get coarser and coarser. And, and talking about the past, I know you're both about 25 years old. So uh -huh. I have to wonder, I was wondering if I could, each one of you, the first time you realized or began to believe there are ghosts around us. You go first. <laughs> Her story is much better than mine, so uh, I'll go first because mine's going to be right? mine's going to be quicker. Um, I I didn't get into the paranormal because I had the, an experience like you and others in the field. I was more afraid of death, so for me, it was I'm not very religious, so I needed something tangible and believable that my brain could understand rather than what somebody tells me. So, excuse me, getting into the field, actually going out and doing things and seeing for myself, which I have many, many times. Right. Um, I've heard many things, but it, when I saw that first full body apparition in a building that we were in, it was a young girl. She looked at me, I looked at her, she went, and then she ran. And I literally froze for a second. And then I went up after her because- You were stunned, wow. Nobody else in that building. I know there wasn't. Right. And that was for me the, holy crap, this it really your is- holy grail. There's something Real. here. Yeah. There's something here. And Chris, oh, and also uh, April. Like April, our friend. friend. Aww, we love you, April. April. We know April. We Sparky. know April. Yeah, she's a kind lady. She really is awesome. <laughs> I call her Sparky. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> and and Chris, you're the first time you thought, oh my gosh. There's something real going on. There wasn't a thought. I was born with um, horrific things happening um, by the time I was 17. Um, very isolated, shut off, three sisters. Had my own room away from everybody because they were terrified to be anywhere near me at night or even during the day. Um, went to my parents at 17. I'm mentally ill. Have to be. This stuff is only happening to me. You need to commit me. And I had very supportive parents and said, no, it's not. Um, the stuff that I experienced was very dark, very, very dark, not the light, cool right. ghost stuff. He had to work real hard to convince me to do the paranormal stuff with him. And the your experience before that. Yeah, because my experiences were very dark all the way up into my 20s. Very dark. And I actually had a priest that showed up out of the blue who I never met, don't know what congregation he came from that said that he was sent from the divine and he had a conversation with me that changed my life profoundly. Wow. That, I, I love things like that because he didn't have to do that, but he chose no. to do that, right? Yep. Talking about good works and uh, Deb says like, when I say sending prayers, I, I pray. <laughs> and yeah. so that's a, that's a nice thing, right? It's yeah. the, the way, the, the way that's the way, you know, a uh, life, life should be. And, you know, speaking of which, uh, many of your guests over the years are investigators. They do go out to locations uh, with their, their mediums, uh, with their, their spirit boxes, their K2 meters, whatever they have, and look for signs, clues, uh, you know, signs of what happens afterwards. But, but like you, Chris, my experience was just horrifying. And so I, I've never been a paranormal investigator. I, if somebody invites me to their event and they're kind enough to do that for me, I will go to be polite, but it's never my, my urge. I never, it's like, you know, what? I'll sit by this chair in case it's haunted. You guys go in that building. I'll keep watch out here. You know, this is, <laughs> you know, I just, just anything runs that. by me. I'll, I'll give you right, guys a call. Right, and... Yeah. I think there's one over there. The ghosts are way over there. The ghosts are pretty slim over there, you know, just, you know, I, I just, but, and that's fair, right? Not everybody uh, views things in the same light. We're saying before in the beginning of the show, some people don't want to believe no matter what that's free will yep. some want to believe so badly they don't they're not critical about things and just take everything oh that must be abraham lincoln in my house again and and then hopefully <laughs> there's, there's people in the middle that try to look at things with hope and and you know and uh, an open eye but also can be somewhat critical as they go through some of the evidence to make sure they're not jumping conclusions because one thing that you cannot get back reputation once that yeah. is gone it's really hard to recover from that and I've seen so many young investigators 
or new investigators, Dr. Young, who go out there and make these pronouncements. And then it turns out it was an app on their phone or that it was someone else's photograph. And it hurts to see because there's something that they're missing that they need that they're not getting to have to pretend that way. And there's an anger out that people lash out at them. And, and I understand why, but I, I always feel really bad because this is going to really hurt them because they were too blind by their own desire, right, to, to do the right thing. Uh, has anybody ever come to you and said, listen, um, I need help with this house or I need help with the, with the situation? Do you ever investigate as a group in that yeah, way? Yeah, and this goes back to, uh, again, the foundation of the people that are in and part of the group. Um, I, again, there is a big skeptical part of me, like you were just talking about. Yes. I just don't take things at face value. If someone shows me a picture, if it's pixelated, I'll say, how do you know that that's a person? Or right. I'll, I'll really dive in. And, and because if she's been through what she's been through, she's got another perspective. And then right. Tanya was part of our group as a psych nurse. And Kenny knows a lot about construction, yeah. air conditioning, heating. So um, a big part of what we do, both dealing with quote unquote spirit and the client, you're dealing with people alive and not alive. So you've got to be able to, you know, kind of see everyone's viewpoint, yet remain objective. And you also have to know how to counsel people because eight times out of 10, there really is nothing going on. Right. But these people are, like you said, they're so convinced because these TV shows have them believing maybe everything is Why don't something. Why you tell them about the, the couple that slept on their sofa for two years? Yeah, but but you, a lot of what we do is counseling. You have to kind of reach people on that level and explain to them and offer them solutions, you, sometimes placebo. John, you're not there to take their money. You're there to help. So we don't take charge money, anybody, All their 16 ever. demons will be ever. back every well, week. Well, I'll tell you, Corey, she, she brought right. up a good point of that. We yeah. get a call. This is a house where these people we're told by this other paranormal group in New Jersey that I won't name that um, there was a demon in their house and this group cornered the demon in their bedroom of all places, not the closet in the right, hallway right, where they yeah. hardly ever go into in their bedroom, put crystals and salt in that room, but don't go in there. This is their bedroom. They slept on their couch, two couches for two a year. Years. No, two years. Was it two years? Two, two years. years. And the husband thought he was a, a retired uh, policeman, PTS, PS, PTSD. Yes. Um, he collected Gettysburg artifacts. He thought he brought something in. Right. And hatched him and came back with him from Gettysburg. Exactly. So this is what he thought. And based on what he told them, we went in there initially and the noises they were hearing, we were able to quote unquote debunk that an air conditioning issue right. in the, in the attic. Um, other things were going on, but they weren't convinced even after we told them. So we brought a medium friend of ours who we really trust she went through the whole house, right? didn't feel anything. We sat with them as a group and counseled them about what we found and what we didn't find and what the medium was picking up. They slept in their bedroom that night, no issue since. But that group led them to believe that there was a blanket demon in yeah. their bedroom. Charged them to come out once a month and never came because back. the demon was so strong it had to be controlled sold them the crystals and the stuff yeah. that they used to trap the demon that had to be renewed every month as well. Right. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to spell PTSD, but I know I have it though. I know I have it. I don't know how to spell it, but I know I, <laughs> I have that. And, and then you deal with other cases yes. where sometimes it's a medical issue yeah, or oh, yes. uh, medication. Well, look at that. Self, self harming, uh, seeing visions, hearing voices, hallucinations, not sleeping properly. When I was medications a worker, that cause issues. Services, a lot of what you associate with paranormal activity is also said with certain clinical diagnoses. Yes. And, and, and usually that is the case. But when I was yeah. a case worker back in 1997, there was a young boy who was actually hearing and speaking to a spirit. And right. luckily I was a case worker because I was able to help with that situation right. quietly and then right. move that thing on. And then the, the boy was okay. But just it's that's part of the tough part about sharing because it's one thing people will say, well, more prisons but not in my neighborhood, right? And so people say, well, I'm open-minded. You know, there are ghosts and things, but not in my family right. and out of my house. And so sometimes you might be afraid to say what you're feeling or seeing or hearing, which is why it's so important. There are folks like you who will go out there and listen carefully and say, okay, let me see how I can best help you not profit 
or get famous because of you, the, the priest of Geneseo, way back in the day in my haunting, his name is Father Charlie Manning, still alive, still with us. Um, I asked him years later, why'd you go in the room? We're like two young college kids. He said, you came into the office of mine and you were petrified. You guys were shaking. Your eyes were watering. I had no doubt something was happening. I didn't know what it was at first, but I knew you needed to help. You came to me, so I'm going to help you. Right. And the first thing he said was, you guys doing drugs? Yeah. And I was so offended by that. I'm like, I don't I want to. He says, listen, I'm not accusing you. Right. You're saying these strange things. If you're using drugs, I don't know it, but I can't help you. Right, exactly. So please understand, I'm, I'm checking the boxes, trying to check things off the list so I yeah. know what it might be. Then I kind of relaxed a little bit, but I was so involved emotionally in that process, I was offended. So I know what it feels like sometimes to not want to be questioning because you're afraid that people will judge you. And it's well, great that you guys both go in there and say, listen, how can we help? And uh, can you either one of you share a case you had without using names or locations where you look back and say, we did a good job right there? That was one of them. There was another one again where another group, I won't mention the group. Uh, same thing, uh, this guy owned his house. Um, he rented out the top floor. The guy living above him practiced black magic. And oh, okay. it was one of those, the guy wasn't paying his rent, so he had to get a lawyer involved and everything to evict this wow. guy. And this guy basically said, I, I put a curse on the apartment and everything like that. And when he moved out, the guy who owned the place, who owns a restaurant, right. he, um, he started hearing footsteps and stuff above his head in that apartment when he knew it was empty okay and he would actually go up there and there would be stuff in the toilet right oh yeah, yeah. True, true story so uh, a group comes in we've got another case of a demon under the stairwell that leads okay. up to that apartment that they found yeah okay so we come in there he's telling us about these shadows figures he sees all the time and he left this apartment and he left this the downstairs apartment, let us in there by ourselves. And he's got mirrors everywhere. He lives on a busy street. So the traffic is coming. The light play from the mirrors and everything. I could see if I was afraid I'm hearing Reflection footsteps. Baby. Sure. I, that would freak me out. Yes. The footsteps we really couldn't explain. But um, we went up there and we didn't see anything. We really didn't notice anything. We brought a medium through. We couldn't find anything really paranormal. And we kept saying to him, you know, who has a key up there? Is there anybody has access to that? And he said, no, it's just me. It's just me. There's something right. going on there. We went back with another medium, walked through again, didn't find anything. He eventually reached out to us again and said he caught the guy who used to live there literally climbing on one roof and then another going up in that apartment. Okay. He caught him in it. He was right. trying to scare him and freak him out. He, he caught him in there. He was going to the bathroom, leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> and just making stomping and then leaving. behind. But again, we didn't really figure out, but we knew there was nothing there. We 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 gone through. We 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 you know brought a couple of people through. His own sister wouldn't go to the house because of this. But we never jumped right. to the demon conclusion. And here's another really quick yeah. case too that really that we're really proud of. Um, without mentioning names, this woman and her husband moved in with their kids to their the parents house they lived somewhere else the father had had a massive stroke and she moved her whole family in with her mother and father to take care of the father for three years right they lived there the father passed the daughter went through severe emotional breakdown right. to where she, she was depressed all the time she wouldn't leave the house and she was sure her father was in that house sure of it she was hearing things seeing things so we come in there. We did find proof that he was there. We caught EVPs of him responding to questions in his voice. Right. So uh, we brought a medium through. The medium, you know, do you, you ever meet Jane Doherty? You met Jane. Oh, yes, Jane? many times, yes. Jane, we love Jane. Yes. Jane actually told this woman, Maureen, that he is here. And because of the state that you're in, she won't leave the house. Her husband and her, the relationship was fractured. She wouldn't see her friends. Wow. She said, because you're not moving on with your life, he's worried about you. And she's he's going to stay here right. until you venture out and you get your life back. You know what? As soon as she started doing that, she gave us a call. It's been this many months. I have no signs of my father. I think wow. he's moved on. That, again, right here. And that's 
but parents do sometimes, right? Parents do sometimes. Yeah, I would do that if it was my daughter or not, and I. Right. I have. Son. I've got to tell you when it's not, and this is this is more important because we didn't get called into a house. We were actually doing a street fair, and this is the stuff that matters to me, obviously because of the background of what I went through and was traumatized right. so much. But we were at a street fair. They asked us to be there. We had a table. We were so out of place with all the other because it wasn't a paranormal event right. at all. And a family came up. It was a mother, the son, and the daughter. And the mother walked up and go, I don't believe in this stuff. This is ridiculous. Right. And I saw the, the daughter standing off to the side, just kind of like out of place. And the, the boy was like all happy-go-lucky, typical young boy. And the mother goes, yeah, she says she sees stuff and she has problems, but she's got such an attitude all of a sudden. You know, I don't know what this is all about. Right. So I just looked at the girl and I smiled and I said, I've been where you are. It's OK. And later on, wow. she came back to the table by herself. We went behind the tent and we had a conversation. She was 13. A year later, the mother came back on her own, saw me, came over and said, I don't know what you said or what you talked to with my daughter totally different kid not problematic she she's she's prospering she's doing well so whatever it was thank you so sometimes it's about connecting yep. and opening up and talking to someone to give them that well ability handled. to move on well handled you don't have to confront anybody you just no. look back and say, listen i understand and sometimes it's the thing you need the most in the world and i you know, i i only have a, a few experiences but there were like traumatizing but I, I remember one point in time to your point thinking i was alone in the world people out in the college dorms at the lawns playing frisbee falling in love what's that song let's hear it for my baby whatever mm -hmm. right you know <laughs> and uh, meanwhile i'm in the room with this thing like breathing and it's cold air <laughs> going around and spying like this is horrible yeah and I, no one understands there's nobody even i'm like alone in the world and then I was in Scranton, Pennsylvania about four or five years ago, just visiting a friend walking on the mall, Steamtown Mall. Yeah. This guy comes up, he goes, Oh my God, you're the ghost boy. Holy cow. And he was running over to me. I'm like, uh oh, call the police. What's happening? Here, right. <laughs> Big bear hug. He's like, ah, he goes, You were, you know, I liked Luke Skywalker and Spock and you. They read about you in the paper and the Scranton paper. And I used yeah, to that's good company right the there. Boy, you know, and was it, what was it like? Was it fun being you? And I said to him, no, it was it was Terrifying. devastating. But you know what? So many times I told him I felt I was all by myself in the world. And to know there was someone out there, some person hundreds of miles away, hoping for me, cheering for me, thinking of me. It really taught me a life lesson that, as I was talking beginning of the show, you are never truly alone, even when you want to be. You know, there's always a connection out there. The concept of put your glass out, it's filled in a sense. There are some bad people out there, but a whole lot of good people. And hopefully you can surround yourself with those people. And some people believe that a spirit or a ghost will take with it, him or her, some of the characteristics of personality they had when they were alive. So maybe if they're grumpy in life, maybe grumpy in death, that's their personality. It's part of them. I, the Warrens back in the day were demonologists. That's what they called them as demonologists. And I know that demonology sells a lot. It's, it's uh, like a buzzword and like, oh, it's a demon. And then oh, the ratings go up through the roof because they're talking about demons. But I don't know everything's a demon or not. Probably not. So you, you are, oh, we're human mortals. You come across the demon, right. you're running the other way. Yes. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe that demons exist or no? And if they do exist, what do you think? Rare in between or okay. for me, very rare, very, very rare, but they do for me only because what I experienced and what I went through, um, I definitely know that they exist. Okay. Not Hollywood's version of a demon. Let me put that no out there green very clearly. And firing no, the no, 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 okay. no, no. Yeah. Trust me. You, they don't even need to do that to torture right. you and mess with your head and, and right just destroy your life. Yes. Right. And, right. and it's it's not what people think. And that's why when I hear people say, I'm a self-appointed demonologist, I go fight demons. No, no. I know right now you're talking right. BS because... No, you're not fighting them. We're mere mortals. We don't have that kind of power. We I'm survive them sometimes, right? Exactly. And that's what yeah. you do. You survive them. You become stronger. You learn to find your center and your strength as a person. And that's what I did to, to overcome what I had to overcome. Yeah. But angels, I've, I've experienced an angel too after the father who visited me. 
can't, and I can't describe it. All I can say is that it is an absence of light, but so bright it's blinding. But the peace and the wonder that comes around you is like anything I could possibly describe to people and human description and what we've experienced. That's cool. Well, Dan Brown wrote a book called Angels and Angel, Demons and Angels, right? So, John, uh, Chris just put it out there. Yes, angels. Yes, demons. Do you Are you in that same boat? Or do you, no, do you no, I, like I said, I wasn't raised uh, religious. My mother uh, <laughs> would get so frustrated with me because when we went to church, you know, weddings, funerals, I was the only one that didn't go to Catholic school. Everybody else did. And I, I don't even know the Our Father of Prayer to this day. She would smack me in the head every time I went to church, and I would just be mouthing the two lines that I knew. But um, I don't believe in demons at all, no. And I don't believe in angels either. Um, I I believe that, like you were just saying, if we believe the spirits are the existence of people without the battery, the body, right. then an evil spirit would be Charlie Manson. In okay, spirit. gotcha. So a serial Four. killer would be evil there too. Exactly. Um, and but demons, angels. Um, I'd like to think now, again, as I'm older and my mom passed two years ago. Right. So I believe that my mom, if there is such a thing as a guardian angel, I, I talk to her a lot when times are tough and and ask for her help even still, you know. And when things go right, I say thank you, mom, you know, for listening. But um Nah, demons and angels, that's a tough one for me. It, it seems too man-made, fairy tale. And that's, why, and that's what I said. It's stuff. not Hollywood's version and what we right. perceive it to be. I am not religious. Right. I am faithful. And the, I was raised Roman Catholic. But when my father and my mother said, it's not you, right. things are happening. We just don't know because, again, I'm in my 50s. Mid fifties here, so back then, taboo, your honor. yeah, right, yeah. taboo, it's and true. they took me to the church, and right. the priest said, "It's you. You're a bad person. That is why this is visiting on you." My father was very yeah. upset and took us out yeah. of the church. Then he took me to a psychic medium that she started to roll out the cards, then told me to get the out of her house and don't ever come back. Seventeen. So this is tough experiences to have. Very tough. So when that father showed yeah. up at my apartment and had that conversation that was between him and I, yeah. that a divine had sent, he yeah. really imparted something that was life-changing. But it's incredible. the same for you, Chris, because what if that priest hasn't been so understanding? Oh, I know. Everybody I know. just kept telling you you were a nut and you're making it up and none of that's happening. Your life would have been Oh, it's true. So much I, Historically, angels were really a person speaking on behalf of the divine, basically. And so yes. that could be a priest. It could be a, a family exactly. member who says that we love you, you know. And so exactly. in that moment, that priest was angelic in nature and that he said, right. listen, you're OK. You know, you're, you're it's OK to be you. And I right. I think that's a super important thing for people to uh, hear and understand as they as they go through their lives. I was very lucky. Um, the church I went to had stained glass windows around the whole church, circle, like a circular church. And as we sat in church for a really long time when you were a kid, the sun would move across the sky. And oh. one window, next window, and people would light up purple and blue and green. I thought, yeah. that's beautiful. Yep. So these, ra these rays from the sun would light them up in their prayer, as they're reading, as they're talking, as they're sleeping, right? It was just light the being. It was a beautiful moment. Like, the world is beautiful. Yes. I like the fact that it's shining through the stained glass windows were supposed to be about like the saints who supposedly sacrificed and gave or a good some. This is with Watergate and the Vietnam War and all these things are happening, right? And I'm I'm looking and saying, wow, there really is, if you look for it, yep. beauty. I think it's like yep. eight years old. So for me, it wasn't religious or spiritual. It was just observing the beauty of the world around me. Right. But it happened in a spiritual religious place. Right. I remind people, how much darkness does it take to wipe out light? And how much light does it take to shine through the dark? Wow, yes. That's whew. that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Note to self, don't steal that. Steal that. <laughs> steal no, it. Use it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a Put it across quote. out there to everybody. People need <laughs> to understand. Really when you oh look for gosh. the good and the positive... Don't focus on the negative, what you can't fix. Look at what came out of a negative. Like my daughter passing, the most terrific thing suddenly. But what came out of it was places that we supported and helped 
donated yes. to mental illness. People who I didn't know were coming forth and saying, oh my God, I suffer from mental illness. My family members do or someone and, and, and what you said and what you did resonates and, and has made a difference. That's right. what we have to remember. Look for the positive out of the bad things and you'll find life's a little bit better. I uh, I really appreciate that. I appreciate both of you. We've got like a minute or two left. Did you want to say a few words about this weekend? I would love if you would, because uh, you can say more than I could say about it. I, I well, go there at my table and say hello to people, but you guys. Put all the work in. in a nutshell, Power Unity was created. This expo was created, again, just out of the idea of to give everybody what they were getting out of the big box corporate casino convention center you know, conventions, but make it affordable for everyone and for kids because we don't make a lot of money. So we wanted to make it so that everyone can meet these people. Because we couldn't do it. We couldn't afford it. So that was the idea behind as we got bigger and bigger and bigger was to keep it grassroots as much as we could and to just make it for the people that are coming. They're the, they're, they're who make this event go. You for coming, the okay. celebrities for coming, the vendors, the people that attended. This is who it's for. This is there are a lot of reward. pieces to it. It's not. And we just don't make Johnny any Chris. money off of this. No. Everything no. goes to the right. Woodbridge Charity Fund. That's a misconception. We don't make one penny. We donate our time no. and energy year after year. We love it. We love it. Well, it shows, guys, and and we love you. It's uh, time for us to leave, folks. Remember what I always say every week: if it's true and it helps. Please say it. All right. This has been Turn to Gold. Please be positive. Stay safe. Thank you to John and Chris for being my spectacular guests. I'll see you in a few days. Yeah, a big hug from allowed to during COVID. Love you guys. Same here. Thank you. Right. Same. And uh, yes, until next week, folks. Uh, until next week, we're going to. Oh, oh, by the way, if I can uh, say this one last thing, um, there'll be lots of posts from me from Power Unity. Hopefully they're, they're, you know, I don't look so silly with my head like this, but lots of <laughs> posts. Please pay attention to those. And if you can't make it this year, please come out next year and support a really great cause. Thanks, folks. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. This has been Turn to Gold on BB3 TV.